Hilton V103, the ATL's number one for hip hop and R&B. It is 718. We are going to take some time and stop the music because I know all across America, everyone was watching Surviving R. Kelly. And some of the things, uh, Moni Love is my special guest co-host for the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, Moni, that everybody was watching was, I think, in shock and awe as mm -hmm. it went through the different episodes, yes. one through six. And we're just taken aback more and more every time. And we were introduced to a family that has ties here in Atlanta, the Savage family, and one one of the episodes. Police got us sitting back here. We're going to see what happened. So I'm just informing yeah, everybody. Just, this is R. Kelly house. We're in front of R. Kelly house. We're trying to check on our daughter, Jocelyn Savage. Make sure my sister, Jocelyn Savage, is okay. And uh, we're going to do what we have to do to make sure my daughter. No bruises, no nothing on her body. We just want to make sure she's fine. If she won't come to us at the concert, we're going to go to her. We're going to make sure that we see her. About four, five police cars here already. If he a man, he need to come out and let my daughter come out. I told him if he ain't come to me, I was going to come to him. All right, surviving R. Kelly. That scene with the Savage family, they are here with their attorney, Gerald Griggs. Uh, good to see you, Attorney Griggs again. Always good to see you, Frank. All right. Thank you for coming in. And the Savage family, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Frank. I, I know you all were here once before, um, but after, of course, um, all of your allegations have been validated right. by, by the show. Remember the last time you all were here, there were a lot of people that doubted you all and doubted um, the validity of whether or not your daughter was being held under her own will or not. And I think that after watching this R. Kelly series, people are finally starting to take you seriously, Mom. Yes, a, burden, a great burden has been lifted. Mm. That exactly. We've been fighting this for two years. Two years. Two years. Attorney Griggs, tell everybody, why is it a fight if that's their daughter? It's a fight because it seems as though um, she's under mental manipulation. Um, they're not allowed to have direct contact with her on the phone or in person. And, and it feels like... But can you back up? What do you mean they're not allowed? Well, they cannot have contact. Uh, they've tried to see her in person. They tried to call her. Her cell phone number has been changed. There's no contact. For two years, they haven't been able to talk to their daughter. Uh, and so they've gone to multiple lengths to make contact. They've gone uh, up to R. Kelly's house, both here and in Chicago. Uh, they tried to make contact through his attorneys, through his management, you know, through law enforcement, and, and they've been unsuccessful. And so we wanted to take this conversation to the nation and the world to shed light on what's happening in this situation. You guys have made direct using, like, platforms such as like right now, right here, V103, you guys have actually made pleas to R. Kelly yes. using these platforms. Like, have our daughter call us. Right. If everything yes. is okay, have our daughter call us. Every news Any outlet. response at all, at all from R. Kelly? No. Only response that uh, I got from R. Kelly, he uh, called me with his manager on the phone, and I asked R. Kelly, I said, I need to see my daughter. Let's cut to the chase. Let me see my daughter. And he said, your daughter loves me. I said, if my daughter loves you, well, my daughter would call and tell me if she loves a man. Why come you won't let me see my daughter? He told me it's not time yet and hug up the phone. Wow. That's scary. Yeah, we, that's, that's infuriating. Yeah, because we get, we get information third party. So, I mean, if nothing is wrong, why we can't just talk to her directly? Now, how old know? is Joyce Lee now? She's, she is 23 now. She met him at 19. But like I said... If she was 23 or she was 33, you know, we don't hear from our daughter. Could you just refresh, yes. go, go back a little bit and refresh um, our listeners and let them know how you came to find out that she was even with R. Kelly? Start from, start from school. Let's start from school. Um, she was in school, uh, college. She um, was in her first year uh, in college, and she was staying on the dorm for the first semester um, everything to our knowledge was doing good. She said she was loving college. And and then when midterms came, she said, I, oh, I did well on my midterms mm -hmm. and everything. And January of the after the, the next following year. Was you got to fight. You got to re-register. Re new re semester. Well, she was already re-registered. She was already set to be on her dorm. Mm -hmm. Her stuff was still in her dorm. And um, we got a call from her roommate and said, Joyce in the room is cleaned out. Um, Never a call to you. No, no. The school no. wasn't notified. The um, school teachers, the directors, nobody in the school system. 
knew that she was withdrawing. And then what happened? What happened then was um, we notified, we notified um, the campus police. Uh, we tried to go up to her room to see if we could find any evidence of what's going on with my daughter. They wouldn't allow us up there because she was over 18 at the time. So we went to the campus police. We filed a campus police report from there, and that moved forward there. So a lot of people say that uh, the families haven't went to the authorities. We've been to every authority you can imagine, from the FBI all the way down to the local police department. So so keep us on the timeline. So you go to the college. You Did you report like a missing person to the college? Yes. Yes, and, we did. And then what happened after that? After we did the missing person report, they uh, called R. Kelly's phone. And when they called R. Kelly's phone, so happened one of the um, – the phones had called back, and it was Diane Copeland's phone that had called back. And Jocelyn called, and we asked her where she was at. And she said she was on a tour bus. And then after I got to talking about maybe five seconds after that, the phone hung up. So take us back if you can, because I think I know where uh, Moni was going. How did she come to know R. Kelly? Well, we own two boutiques here in Georgia. It was on Old National. Mm -hmm. My wife and my daughter was at the uh, Old National location, and one of our customers had came in there, and they heard the girls singing. Jocelyn was already doing some performance with a, a local uh, that did the Wobble song, mm -hmm. Jumbo, on the track yeah. with you. Yeah. So um, she was already involved in music a little bit mm -hmm. from that standpoint. But a customer had came in, and Kevin Giles is R. Kelly's road manager. Right. She knew... Uh, the customer had knew Kevin Giles, and Kevin Giles got in touch with us, and he told us Sony was interested in signing my daughter. All the time, that was a plot to get my daughter. So Sony's interested in signing your daughter, and then what happens? Listen, Sony was never interested in signing my daughter. It was always a plot from R. Kelly. And okay. who was it that, that Kevin Giles? Oh, Kevin at Giles. the time, all right, time yeah. he was the stage okay. manager, and we we haven't heard from him. So then, before. does he take you to meet R. Kelly? He took us, well, he, no, he didn't take us to meet R. Kelly. Kelly came to our store okay. and he talked to us, not R. Kelly himself, but um, the manager. Okay. Right. And when he came back in town for the Funk Fest right. concert, um, Kevin Giles had invited the, my daughter, and I sent my, my middle daughter with her as well, to the concert to officially meet him. Okay. At, and they met him backstage. So, to meet R. Kelly. Yes, they were just basically. They was there to re actually to just see performances. Yeah, so and if, so if if you can, because I think one of the things that that's keeping me out of the loop is that. So your daughter's a singer. Mm -hmm. Kevin comes in to um, meet the daughter that we want to sign her. Right at this time, R. Kelly had never met her. No, not at all. He was actually saying he was a representative for Sony and R. Kelly. R. Kelly was just going to be a uh, what you can say, I guess. Yeah, producer her, producer or so what right on the track on her mm -hmm. uh, songs so, so then i guess when r kelly finally meets your daughter right then it goes to a different place yeah this is crazy um when they went to the concert they was just supposed to go to the concert here in georgia the mm -hmm. funk fest they was just actually supposed to be there and actually view what was going on to see how large of a crowd that he can draw and what they can be expected upon so at that point my daughter jocelyn and Jalen had walked, they was getting ready to leave, and somehow another, R. Kelly's nephew go and hand, some man, but we come to find out this R. Kelly's nephew, hand a piece of paper with a number on it. And at that point, Jalen said, got the number from Jocelyn, and said, you need to get that to mom and daddy if it's got something to do with music. So from that point, my wife, they had planned a... Uh, so you sure. started taking over at that point? Yes, yes. my wife. Okay. And yeah. at that point, she actually uh, scheduled something with uh, Cheryl Mack, which was his coordinator at that time. Mm -hmm. And they scheduled, and it was very professionally done, uh, out on the West Coast to meet R. Kelly. And from that point, I don't know what happened because I wasn't they there. They invited us um, uh, as, his, as a VIP guest mm -hmm. and to see the show in Palm Springs, California. And at the show, we were to go back into a meeting. So after the show, um, we were escorted back to his private area, whatever, and we talked for like three hours. About what? Um, it was a variety of things. A lot of the comment, a lot of the, he rambles a lot. So he talked. He went through the whole uh, trapped in the closet series. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about his upcoming ones that he haven't released, mm -hmm. and um, he listened to her CDs. 
and again again because she had some new music she already had music out we just okay. wanted kind of him to you know go and mm-hmm. uh, you know add some more things to it to make it better mm-hmm. so and he was talking in general a lot of stuff was in general a lot of things were basically just that that he wanted to be her he wanted to be her he wanted him to be her protege basically. okay let's let's take a quick break and when we come back we're going to fast forward from there to how how you lost your daughter mm-hmm. and everything that was going on and, and the collusion to keep your daughter away. And Attorney Griggs, we have a lot more questions. It's the People Station V103. The entire country was watching the series Surviving R. Kelly. Even moments ago on Good Morning America, they were talking about it. Various attempts to get media attention, but it doesn't take hold. And again, I think that goes back into this idea that black girls don't matter. And while surviving R. Kelly was trending at number one on Twitter during its debut, his music was getting renewed interest as well. Now I'm not trying to be rude. With reports, his music on some platforms have actually seen a spike in streams, prompting Jada Pinkett Smith to post a provocative question. And I'm having a really difficult time understanding why. And I really don't want to believe that it's because black girls don't matter enough. Or is that the reason? Chance the Rapper, who collaborated with R. Kelly on the 2015 song Somewhere in Paradise, saying it's something he regrets. Making a song with R. Kelly was a mistake. I'm happy that, you know, those women are getting you know, voices now. Other celebrities praising the series on Twitter and John Legend, one of the few who agreed to take part in the series, tweeting, it didn't feel risky at all. Adding, these survivors deserve to be lifted up and heard. I hope it gets them closer to some kind of justice. Now, R. Kelly was acquitted in, 19, in 2008, rather, of multiple charges involving child pornography and underage sex. A decade later, though, he still has an active music career. And of course, the bitter irony is that this new scrutiny and infamy is helping them sell. All right, we're talking about surviving R. Kelly. We are joined by the Savage family. They are here. Let's go to the phones. We will take our first call. Attorney Griggs is representing them. V103, hello. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I've been watching the statue series. I didn't finish it. Um, it was quite troubling. But my question is, why is R. Kelly so different from a person like, I don't remember, remember his first name, but his last name was Castro when he held Amanda Berry and two other women captive for 10 years. And one of the girls that he kidnapped knew him as her friend's father. So I'm trying to figure out how is this man, R. Kelly, able to get away with holding women captive? And even, you know, when we see religious cults, we see the government go in and take women and children and and babies away from being held captive. What makes this situation so different? Attorney Griggs, help us out with this. I think what makes this situation slightly different is, you know, we have uh, evidence and we have prosecutors who just aren't acting. And so we've been in touch with the Fulton County District Attorney and we're going to provide him the evidence that was in the documentary. And I think they will act. But, you know, the government has to have a warrant to kick in a door uh, to go and have a search. And before this, they haven't had that concrete evidence. But I think after the docuseries, we have credible, uh, irrelevant evidence at this point to get a warrant to investigate and potentially arrest R. Kelly for the allegations that occurred at the Johns Creek house. So I'm, it, I'm hopeful. Does it help your case that your daughter made a video that she was there by her own will? Does that does that help? I mean, she's she's over 18. She's of consent age now. And she did a video that they had on TMZ saying, you know, basically, leave me alone. I'm grown. I'm not being held under my will. Does that hurt the case for the family? I I don't think so because we have other evidence that she's being held against her will. We have witnesses and text messages that speak directly differently uh, to that that tape. We can also see in the tape there is somebody making a hand gesture uh, directing her to say certain things. So we are we believe that uh, that was a prepared statement. We still haven't had direct contact with her. Um, and so that's why we are so uh, it's imperative for law enforcement to get involved. And we believe the two witnesses we will provide will help us do that. And there's more videos since then. Right. Yes. Most of all the videos are scripted. We knew that. But if you if everyone had viewed the documentary and saw the anonymous person that was his ex-employee, mm-hmm. um, she was there and she said that 
the meetings, they actually had sit down meetings to see how they could plot to get the, you know, discredit what we were saying, what we came out with. Because one video that I saw of, of Joyce Lynn and she was in L.A. and t it was on TMZ also and she was being asked, you know, so what are you doing out in L.A.? And she was like, oh, you know, I'm out here on vacation um, shopping. And she must have said that specific line about four times mm. right. okay right. and the interesting and, thing and about the, that and the, before you even say that yeah. she had shades on i couldn't see her eyes exactly as a parent that bothered me okay because i'm like I can't, I can't see her eyes i don't know i can't tell her expression you know what i'm saying and she mm. repeated the same thing oh i'm out here in la shopping i'm out here in la shopping and then there's a person standing next to her that's looking at her as if like to make sure she's saying the right thing and then looking back at the camera person. It just looked odd. And the interesting about that, the person next to her is Dominique, another individual who was in the house who was subsequently freed in the documentary. Uh, but the most important thing is what she said. She said she was out there visiting family and friends. She has no family and friends exactly. in LA. Exactly. That I knew. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me let me ask this hard question. And and I remember the first time when you all came um, on the morning show, there were a lot of people who were very critical of you both saying that you introduced your daughter to R. Kelly, that you were in it for the stardom, that you, like, it's your fault. Because right. you introduced your daughter to R. Kelly. I know that's a hard thing, right. mm -hmm. and I just have to ask it. How do you handle that now? I handle that um, now. I handle it as the world knows now. When I introduced my daughter to R. Kelly, none of this was out. But if you're basing your decision of why we let our daughter go to based off of what you found out now, um, not, not talking about the case in mm -hmm. Aaliyah, the marriage, because he was acquitted for all of that. So I was, I was, I wasn't, didn't have a, you know, but I, in all fairness, way, a lot just, of parents could say, right. R. Kelly's been this way for a long time. Like there's always been allegations that R. Kelly preys on these women. You know, did I, that concern you as a mother when you were introducing her to R. Kelly? I knew about Aaliyah. I really did. I knew that he was an artist that was, you know, mm -hmm. talking about a lot of sexual things. But this was a business relationship that, he, that I met through his stage manager. I Like I said, I didn't know all of the dark side of it at the time. Okay. So, and also, we only met twice. She was with me. So, on one of the meetings, another major, Fantasia, she was in the studio with him then when we went to the, okay. we were invited. So, it wasn't any different. He's worked yeah. with Whitney Houston, um, everybody, you know, Whitney yeah, Houston, yeah. Michael Jackson, everybody. So, I saw that as a business opportunity. Okay. And that's why I was you with her. You felt safe and comfortable. As long but, as, yes, I But did. you're saying that when he came and got your daughter, he it never was, came it was from college. It was from college. I don't it know was how from she college. Left. So yes. you weren't mm -hmm. even involved at that point. No, right. she was. We had already paid tuition for that. Let me, let me ask. Let me ask this question because I know there's probably people that are listening. When we hear situations of cult-like activities, where you have a cult, there's a there's usually a uniformity of a way of the mind control. Mm -hmm. In many cult activities, it's religion. Right. What do you think it is with R. Kelly? He uses, he does use religion. He is, I I put it that R. Kelly is a, a, a factor of all his characters. Like it, if you looked at the Trapped in Closet series, he's a character. He has a he has a personality for each character. You know, the pastor, the pimp. You know, the other character. He is all those people. Though mm. you know, and and one of the girls told me that he could play play his piano and be preaching, sing, and have everybody in the room crying at the house. So he manipulates them through spirituality. Um, he makes them believe that he's the only one that loves them. And it and it's it's sad. I don't know what he actually does, but one of his ex workers told me that he's basically a master manipulator. See Go ahead, he Dan. goes through his managing team, the people that's around him. You you can blame R. Kelly, but you also have to blame his team. Thank you, yes. Because they are he went yeah. through Kevin Giles, Kevin Giles was going through Sony. We wasn't supposed to go through R. Kelly. R. Kelly was just supposed to be executive producer on this. So it kind of led into R. Kelly. Whole time, it wasn't Sony. They was using Sony as a crutch to actually to move my daughter the way they need to be moved. You know, there's uh, here in Atlanta, um, this has been deemed nationally as the hub of sex, sex trafficking. trafficking. Atlanta is the hub of sex trafficking. So it is a international sting going on in Atlanta for sex trafficking. Why hasn't R. Kelly been 
brought in or at least questioned, brought in for questioning for that. Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that this is involving African-American girls? I think it's a strong reason why attention hasn't been brought because it's, it's black and brown children, women. And I think that should change. Yes, we are the hub for sex trafficking. We have sex trafficking task force. We have um, the federal agents who specialize in that. But they're not looking at it this way because these are brown and black girls. And that needs to change. So they're not? So you've been to the sex trafficking people and said, well, they've we've been directly. Me. They've been yeah. to my home. Yes. They've kept my phone for a week. Are you serious? The yes. FBI yes. has I've, been to our home. Yes. We Two have. agents has uh, right. visited our home. They kept her phone. They had We had to write up statements, all that. So we've done everything. And we sent them to the, some of the other girls that um, that were featured in the documentary. And they also talked to the FBI. Only one girl did not and talk to the FBI. Job. What is it going to take to get an arrest flat out? Two witnesses. And my hope is that the district attorney will move on this. They have evidence from the Johns Creek House. They just need cooperation. I think the video as well as two witnesses cooperate that. And my hope is that Mr. Howard will take the necessary steps. And I believe he will. Let's take a quick break. Do you all mind staying a couple more minutes? Sure. Yeah. We have some people wanting to call. Our number is 404-741-WVEE. The Savage family is with us. My co-host this week, Moni Love, is here. It is 749. Let's get this check on traffic. Surviving R. Kelly was the six-part series that everyone was watching, and I think it sent chills down everyone's spine as you went through the series. One of the families that has local ties is here in the studio, the Savage family, and they have been desperately searching for their daughter for nearly two years. They are here in the studio. My co-host for the next couple weeks is Moni Love. And, and Moni, you yeah. know, y you and I and, and Attorney Griggs, I, I, I want you to understand that uh, obviously Moni Love has been in the entertainment business and music business for a very long time. I remember when you were coming up, I was coming up. Right. And in the music business, <clears throat> It was commonplace to see us young people there. Right. How old were you? When I got my record deal? Yeah. 16. 16 years yeah. old. What kind of experience did you have? I mean, you were, everybody wanted to date you. You had the British accent. You were the female rapper. You were cute. It was frustrating for me as a 16-year-old because I wanted to win the respect of my, uh, my, my comrades. And in addition, it was... I had extra stuff to prove because I was from a completely different country. Okay. So not only do I want to be respected as an MC, I want to be respected because I don't come from the country of the origin of hip hop. Okay. You know what I mean? And then to come over and everybody that's heard me knows I'm dope, but all the guys are like, oh, she's a cutie and this and this and that. And it's like, it didn't matter when, what I when did. When you came, did you come by yourself? I came by myself. No parents? No parents. But see, I'm from, I'm from a Jamaican background and I had grandparents that moved from jamaica to brooklyn new york okay you know so big you up, had big up family Flatbush. yeah you had family yeah so so can you after you saw this series and now you're a mom of three girls how did you feel after i saw the series yeah. i tried not to watch it did i tell you that already this yeah. morning i didn't i tried my hardest not to watch it my two older daughters put it on i had i watched it by default and how, did, how does that make you feel in your gut pissed Ooh, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. You're good. <laughs> well, it made you mad. Yes. Why? Yes. Because I was abducted when I was five years old. You right? were abducted. I'm just going to go ahead and okay. put, put, it, put it on the table. I was abducted when I was five, and I don't remember very much from being five years old, but that I remember. And so when this comes about, when a parent goes to their child's school at their dorm and discovers that their dorm has been cleaned out and their child is no longer at school and they have neither heard from them nor seen them there's no explanation there's no nothing there's just wind i am absolutely I, it, it hits me in my gut and it did hit me in my gut it's very sad I, i'm sad listening to you yeah and you know that's that's i told my daughters about it what happened to me I remember it 100%. I was brought back to school. I was taken away from school, out the schoolyard by a man that said he was my uncle and I'm five years old and oh, I have to, we have to get your cousin. He's just outside the gate. Took my hands and I walked out with him. And uh, then we got in his car and we drove to a garage, an underground garage. 
And he undid my seatbelt and he sat me on his lap. And then he took my hair out and started combing it. And the craziest thing is, if you are of like old time Jamaican mothers, come home from school the same way you got to school. If you hear plat up when you got to school, make sure when you come home the same plat them still in your hair. Right. He took me out the seatbelt, put me on his lap, and undid my hair. At that point, I was like, something's wrong. He took my hair out. Anybody in my family would know you're not allowed to take my hair out. So I said to him, you're not my uncle because you're not allowed to take my hair out. And I know that. I knew that at five. He sat me right back in that seat. He put the seatbelt back on me and he drove me back to school. And when I got back to school, the police were already there waiting because they had already been looking for me in the school. Like, where is she? And he let me walk in the school gate and I walked down and into the school building by myself, five years old. I remember undergoing a rape kit. At five years old, I don't remember anything else, hardly, from five, but that I remember. So but you've taught your daughters that? Every single bit of it. So when you saw this series last night, it's scary. Yes. Mom, let me ask you, you what was your weakest point? Yeah, what was your weakest point? Hold on, let me get your mic on. Go ahead, you're, you're good. My weakest point, I've had many weak points. My most recent weakest point is to watch everything that I've already known for the last two years uh, come to pass and just view it on TV and with all the missing pieces. But my weakest point is out of my, we have three daughters, so this is my oldest daughter. My weakest point is not knowing how to even contact my daughter. I always had access to my daughter, um, even from, from the time she was born up to the time that she was in college. You know, um, so my weakest point is basically it's just not knowing, just the fear of not knowing, no matter if, you're, if it's my younger daughter or my younger da daughter that's over 18. I, I want to say uh, we're WVEE Atlanta, WVEE HD1, a radio.com station, the people station, V103, the ATL's number one for hip hop and R&B. We are joined by the Savage family and their attorney, Attorney Griggs, after watching the series Surviving R. Kelly. You know, I... I got to I got to say this cuz I know there's probably people that are thinking this same thing. I don't know how you how you all seem so cool. <laughs> like I'm sitting here like wow. why aren't you like bawling out of control, falling over We're like cried out. I mean, I'm not I'm cried out to the point where your daughter's gone. I have I have I I'm cried out and at this point I am I'm a little relieved since the series that came out because it's opened up a lot of our eyes. It's um it's kind of, it's people some people for whatever reason still thinks we should have known not to send her to our send her to our Kelly but we did not know mm -hmm. once I found out I immediately started investigating and right. got in touch with mm -hmm. um, the journalist Jim, Jim Derigas and they wasn't going they wanted my story but they wasn't going to take it the editors couldn't take it because I didn't have enough proof mm -hmm. and so they told me to go out and find other girls that had lived with him or co-workers let's do let's do this let's um let's take some of these calls that i have here the people station v103 the atl's number one for hip-hop and r&b go right ahead one of my questions is to the mother did you have a gut feeling when you started feeling um you know something was wrong and <coughs> to the father me listening um at the age of your daughter um, I, I take it you look around 40-something years old. So we knew the history of R. Kelly, and um, it's a lot of access to the Internet. We've heard and seen and read all the stories. So if your daughter would have been became famous, would this be an issue? Mm -hmm. Would this be an issue if she would have? It would be an issue if she was the president. It would be an issue no matter what the situation is. No, I'm, I'm just saying if, if, right. if, if, if your daughter was famous now and doing music mm -hmm. would you feel different no because we would never sell our daughter never we would never advise her to sell her dignity or any type of success right period let's go to the phones v103 hello my comment is um i wanted to let the black lives matter about this r kelly thing we need to change the laws in Georgia and Chicago and Florida as far as men being able to talk to 17-year-old children when they're 17-year-old trying to say that it's consensual. That needs to change. Amen. They're not able to determine if this person is good for me 
at 17 years old. At 18 years old, that needs to be the law where no grown man can talk to a child, period. Attorney Griggs, how old was their daughter when she went missing? She was 19, 19 years old. And I do agree that we have to revisit some of these consent laws here in the state of Georgia, uh, as well as around the nation, because they're not uniformed. And we have to really address this situation that's occurring where young women are being preyed upon by older men. So I definitely agree we need to have that conversation and I hope that some of the lawmakers are listening uh, currently and are understanding the situation that's happening right now and will start to lend their support to this family and other families that are going through this because this is not the only family that's going through this and many people are going through this with people that are not as famous as R. Kelly and so this is a teachable moment and a moment for change uh, in this state as well as many others. Let's go to the phones again, B103. Um, my question is to the to the family I just, well, I guess it's more of a statement, but I just want to say I find it very hard to believe that you guys didn't know R. Kelly's intention with these young ladies. And I do agree with the world that you guys introduced your daughter to that man. I, I heard the, the, the mom say that she knew about Aaliyah, but I think that there were several other incidents that had taken place by the time your daughter was introduced to R. Kelly. And I just find it very hard to believe that because you thought that he was acquitted, that everything is going to be okay. I mean, I, 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 cannot, I think that I think that the difference, and and if you heard what Mom said, and I hear what you're saying, is that there was never a time where they sent their daughter to R. Kelly alone. There was that time never happened, and she was always involved somewhere along the line. His people intervened and got the daughter away from the parents. You know, and okay. and if, if you could just think of it in that light, it, it might give you a little bit better understanding. But thank you for your call. OK, how do you answer okay. that, mom? The way I answer that, when you say when someone says, um, did I know about his past allegations? I knew about the after Lee, I knew about the trial that with the 14 year old. But I did. That was not our thing. We did not go into the relationship with him to have a personal relationship. It was right. always business. And my and we the, the relationship was started through his manager. I mean, his assistant that actually arranged our first meeting. And it was done very professionally. We didn't even talk to Mr. Kelly right. until I got to the concert, asked to, uh, we got to the concert, to VIP guest, and got backstage. That was my first time physically meeting him. I, I, I can kind of understand. when I When I hear your story now, I have a different view because what you're saying is your daughter was singing. She was making music. The guy that came to you was supposed to be the caveat to you and Sony music. Exactly. It was never supposed to be R. Kelly. Right. It was just talked about that R. Kelly may produce one of the songs, and he was like a secondary person to you trying to get a record deal with Sony Records, not with R. Exactly. R. Kelly. That's but exactly. somewhere along the way, you feel your daughter was abducted. Exactly. And I want to say one thing. When people say, why they let her work with her, in my eyes, she, although she wasn't a known artist, but she was no, she was an upcoming artist. She wasn't any different from the hundreds of artists that still work with him up to this day that right. know about what's going on right now. You know, so it's no different. It's so no why different. They're working with it's R. a business Kelly. relationship for them, and it was, that's how I feel that it was for right. us as well. And here's what we have to really understand: a lot, a lot of people want to blame the the families, and this family you cannot blame. But we still cannot excuse what we know he is still doing at this point, and he needs to be held accountable. Very interesting is that I I, I watch my own kids. Yes, and I have boys, and these kids are the slickest like there's so many parents calling saying well if they was my kids i i know my kids are doing a bunch of stuff that i don't exactly. know about exactly i'm so glad you said that and as a you know i hear so many and i had to check out online as far as discussing this because it got me so mad because there were actually so many women mothers that were like well, this could never happen to my daughter because, you know, th you know, they brought her to him and blah, 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 blah. And I, I, I got frustrated. I had to check out because I'm like, first of all, they got cut out the entire the, the Savage family got cut out the entire situation. Mm -hmm. They just did, you know, skipped, skipped them and get straight to the to, to the daughter. 
Right. At, you know what I'm saying? And when your kids are at school, which their daughter was at school, and that's why this terrifies me so much, is because I have a daughter in college. Yeah. And there's a level of dead air that right. happens when right. your kids are at school. Yeah. There's only so much you can be in their business. Let's go and, to this and call. usually they come to you when they want the money. That's it. Let's go to the call. V103, hello. I agree with the previous caller, um, but not so much on I find it hard to believe. I'm going on the interview that the parents of Savages have done. During the documentary, they clearly stated, even when she, before their daughter went on stage, was that they knew about what happened, but he was acquitted. And just now, not five minutes ago in the interview with you, the mother stated that I didn't know. And as soon as I found out, that's when I started investigating. Um, R. Kelly, uh, and everyone knew what R. Kelly went, was going through and what happened and, and the trial back, back in the day. There was not a single soul that had no idea what that man had done. But I'm a mother myself, and I will not not know what my daughter is into and, and I mean I'm in her business you know so the fact that they're saying that, that they had no idea that they, they even said on the show that they were in contact with R. Kelly after she met with him and, and, and kids to me Dad. Huh? what? listen guys we from BuzzFeed of 717 of 2017 the article broke they have a family called the Clary family and the Savage family They've been getting the Savage family confused with Alice Clary and Angelo Clary. We did not have our daughter on no stage. We did not do any of the things that this young lady is talking about. They've been getting us confused with the Clarys from day one. Our daughter was away in college, guys. That's We, we don't have no source of control when your daughter's away in college. The only thing we can do is call and check on her to make sure she's right. fine and make sure she needs anything. But we don't know what she's doing day to day in college. Only thing we could do as a family is love our daughter and know what's going on. So we people, we have to understand, get the story straight. If you're going to say something, make sure you got the right family first. And to say, just to add to that, just to say you with during your daughter's business. I did what you call phone checks on my daughter's cell phone up to she was high school. You know, uh, she, they, my three girls think, well, my two older teenagers, they always thought I was overprotective. I wasn't that I was overprotective, but I always monitored. I didn't let them sleep over people's house that I didn't know. Or even if I did know them, if I didn't feel comfortable, if it wasn't a birthday party mm -hmm. or a special occasion, I still didn't let go. And if they went out with a boy, I had to know his address. I had to know where he stayed, a contact number. So, but you have to remember that a predator... Had, is very slick and we are talking about a seasoned predator mm. like R. Kelly the entertainer and Robert Sylvester Kelly the man are totally two different people totally two different people I would never took my daughter to meet him if I had known if somebody would have, would have it goes back until it goes back uh, no respect to the Leah family it goes back to their family they didn't speak out they didn't file charges um, it goes back to the trial the parents didn't file charges. They didn't say anything. He settled multiple, multiple cases with uh, lawyers, uh, with young eight girls under 16. They have not spoken. The cases are sealed. So if these people would have did what I had the courage to do, to take the heat, if my family, to get the word out, that's what we did. Exactly. You know, when um, uh, Drea Kelly came and sat down with me not long ago, and before the series came out, when she was putting out her book, and she talked about why it took her so long for her to to come out. And I want to play the clip of what she said on V103. It took a long time to mm -hmm. get to this point. Well, why now? Why not now? You don't get to dictate my healing process. Yeah. I was in a very dark place for a very long time. So if it took me 10 years to get in it, it might take me 10 years to get out of it. I don't understand people's thinking process of, well, it happened so long ago. Why is she talking about it now? How can I be powerful for the powerless when I don't have my own power yet? How can I be a voice for the voiceless when I haven't found my own voice yet? I had to go through my healing process I had to get strong. I had to build up my self-worth. I had to get to a point where I'm going to speak about this without shame. How can I do that and be authentic and true and be a vessel and be a hypocrite at the same time? 
That's just not me. I cannot do it. And I had to wait. I had to wait for God to say move because I have children, because it not only affects me, me coming out. It's not just Drea Kelly comes out. It's people hitting my kids on Twitter. Oh, I didn't know your mom was abused by your dad. So I had to make sure mentally, emotionally, they could handle it. And when they said, Mom, you know what? We support you. Do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. We love you. I was like, all right, God and my kids. Now it's time. And I'm not here to satisfy other people's curiosity about my life. I'm here to tell my journey. You know, there's many times during that series where the, um, uh, the counselor that was on there, psychologist was talking about the mental state and how these girls were, they couldn't believe they found themselves in that situation when they did. Mm-hmm. At first, it, it never starts off like that. Right. You know what I mean? It always starts off different. And then all of a sudden comes the abuse afterwards. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and now, right now, your your daughter is probably in that situation where at first it was fun. It was the exactly. adrenaline. It was like, okay, I'm going to go against my parents. I'm at school. Right. I'm mm -hmm. grown now. And then she puts herself in that situation. And then now the predator strikes. And Andrea Kelly talked about that process um there's no real pinpoint for you to say this is the day it became abusive i think that people need to also understand that the physical is the aftermath of all the abuse you've already been in mm -hmm. they don't realize that first you go through the emotional the verbal the psychological the monetary controlling the money the sexual abuse the physical is really there to keep you in fear of them the physical is to let you know that there's a punishment and repercussions for me not not controlling you in that there's no real way for you to go oh it was the first day he hit me and that's what I want women to understand they have that it's not that bad mentality oh well he just screamed at me it's not that bad then he when he grabs your arm but he just grabbed my arm it's not that bad but then when he slapped you but he didn't punch me it's not that bad then when he punches you well he never broke a bone so it's not that bad so before you get to the point of it's that bad you have to look back at how long you've actually been in it Let's let's do this before you all leave. We got a couple more minutes. I know by a lot of certainty R. Kelly is listening to us right now. Attorney Griggs, do you think he's listening? I would hope so. And this is what I would have to say to Mr. Kelly. We've contacted your manager. We've contacted your former lawyers. We're contacting you directly. Let Jocelyn Savage go. She needs to speak to her parents in person. If you're here in Atlanta, we can make that happen. We've always asked for that. You can make it happen. Let's make it happen right now because this has gone way too far. And if she's not in touch with her parents very, very soon, it will go even further. Make her available. Mom, anything you want to say to your daughter? Um, um, my daughter, um, she's hopefully she's listening, but she's, she's probably not there. I'm totally isolated from media. Um, but if she is, I want my daughter, Jocelyn, to Jocelyn, mommy loves you dearly loves you dearly and whatever mistakes or whatever um whatever you were told by rob that she's the, uh, the only one that loves you or has your best interest that is not true you have a whole family a family of of um of sisters grandparents everybody um but we love you and we want to see you we want to talk to you and we just want to have you have you home with us to make sure you're okay dad Baby girl, daddy love you. No matter what you're going through right now, I'm here for you. No matter what nobody say about you, daddy will always love you. Come home. I will hold you until you want me to stop holding you because I love you. I will always be your rock. No matter what the situation may be, I love you, no matter what. Thank you. It's okay. It's okay. Oni, any last words? How can I, you know, it's all said right there. You know, coming from another parent in the room. We're all parents, like all of us here speaking. Mm -hmm. Just like, let this girl speak to her family. That's it. And, and that's all, really, at the end of the day. So much can be accomplished just by a conversation. Attorney Griggs, thank you. Thank you for having Savage us. Savage family, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're here. We're here to be your voice. If you need to come back on at any time, you come back on. 
Thank it's 828. Let's go to the V103 News and Traffic Center. Thank you very, very much, Maria Boynton, for setting up this interview. Thank you, Maria.